Welcome to today's presentation, Automating Accounts Payable and More with Robotic Process Automation for Microsoft Dynamics ERPs. My name is Doug Bertram. I'm going to give you a brief overview of our MetaViewer AP automation solution. I would encourage you, if you want more information or would like a one-on-one, -on -one, more in-depth demonstration of your need and discussion of your needs, uh, shoot us an email at info at metafile.com. So everything centers around MetaViewer as a document management, content management, imaging type of solution, and it really can be leveraged across your enterprise for all kinds of different uses. Today we're going to focus on how we take that technology and apply it to the challenges of AP automation and processing your invoices. So taking that technology, it starts by capturing the documents as soon as they come into your organization, whether they be paper or electronic. And it's really this electronic side that we like to focus on with our clients. If you can have your vendors email you uh, invoices, we can have MetaViewer set up to watch one or multiple email boxes to automatically pull in the attached invoice, preventing that paper from ever happening, but more importantly, preserving the textual information that that document contains. It feeds directly into a tool that we created called Invoice Accelerator that will intelligently read that document and extract the data. We use the data to index or identify what that document's all about in our system, uh, but ultimately we're going to push and create the transactions over in your Microsoft Dynamics system so you don't have to key the information over there as well. So that's really the ideal solution. Nobody has to uh, open up mail, nobody scans anything in, nobody has to key the information into GP or MetaViewer. Um, and so that's where you try to focus and get more and more of your vendors to do that. We also realize that you still probably get some paper, and so we have ways to work with that as well. You are going to use some kind of scanner or multifunctional copier device to scan the do documents into the system. If you do scan a document, it is just a picture. There is no text for us to extract, and that's why on my diagram here, I have an extra box that says scanning OCR. There's an automated process that we run. If we don't find any text, it evaluates that document and essentially converts that picture back into text, and so then it feeds into that same tool, that invoice accelerator tool that's going to intelligently read, extract the data, and deliver those documents right into workflow. Workflow in our, our base AP automation solution um, has two broad workflow routes for different types of documents. Non-purchase order related invoices, they get automatically coded from the vendor records, they get routed around for approval or editing of the coding. Once all that has transpired, we're going to push and create the transaction up in Microsoft Dynamics. Purchase order invoices, most organizations don't really want to route those around for approval. That was the whole purpose you created the purchase order in the first place. You knew this invoice was coming in, and we, you have all that data for that purchase order transaction in your Microsoft Dynamics uh, solution. So we then extract the purchase order number. We do uh, a bunch of different rules and checks and balances. If everything passes, uh, then we are going to uh, automatically match that invoice to the receipts and then push and create the transaction in Microsoft Dynamics. So there's a lot of tight integration with all, all the versions of Microsoft Dynamics. Uh, we talked about some of them, uh, pulling back the vendor records, uh, some of the vendor details, uh, matching up to the PO information, working with the chart of accounts so we can only enter valid charts, uh, valid account combinations, uh, doing duplicate checks, making sure that uh, somebody didn't slip one in behind us and uh, create a duplicate transaction, so we kind of do checks and balances for all that. So there's very tight integration with the system for those purposes. And the last aspect of the solution is really retrieval, giving everybody access to whatever they need when they need it. Uh, the advantage for us is there's no software to load. We use a standard internet browser as a tool to talk to the MetaViewer system. Whether you choose to install MetaViewer on-premise or we do have a hosted data center that we could host your MetaViewer solution. In either of those cases, you're going to use a standard browser to access the system. And it is mobile friendly, so that if you did log in with a smaller device, like a phone or a tablet, the system will sense that, that you're on a smaller device, allow you to see all the same information. It just is going to present it a little bit differently uh, so that you can uh, see everything fits on a smaller screen. And then you can use the gestures that you're typically used to using, like pinching and zooming and swiping and, and all those kinds of things. And then to take retrieval one step further, once we hand the transactions off to Microsoft Dynamics, uh, if you're looking at the transaction, we have a menu item that you can click, I want to view the invoice. And then it actually passes this data from that active screen, executes a search all in about a second or two, and now you have that document side by side with your Microsoft Dynamics screens. 
That's important because as that document flows through workflow, we track an audit trail. Who touched that document on what date and time? Who coded it? Who approved it? Did somebody put notes on it? And you have complete visibility to all that information in the audit trail area of our system. So let's jump over to a real live working solution. So if I go over to my virtual machine, um, I'm on my home page here with all the various uh, things that I have the rights to see and do in MetaViewer. So we pulled those invoices in. They all came in through an email box or through a, a network folder or something like that. They were evaluated with Invoice Accelerator. We extracted the data, and then some of them got pushed all the way up to Microsoft Dynamics without anybody touching them. So, for example, I've got eight documents in this queue up here that says Waiting for Payment. If I click on that, I can see several purchase order related invoices that are uh, right here towards the bottom. We uh, those all pass the checks and balances uh, against and match to the to the receipts. So we push those all the way over to Microsoft Dynamics and now they are ready to be paid. Once they are paid, we will pull back and populate the payment information on those transactions uh, which would then allow you to search by payment number and pull up all the related uh, transactions. If for some reason one of the purchase related invoices uh, failed to match appropriately in this AP preparation queue, um, this is where you would uh, be processing some of the non-PO invoices as well as the PO invoices. If I open up an example of one that failed those validation checks, um, so you can see on the right all the different checks and balances that we do on the invoice. Uh, most everything passed other than we had more receipt lines in Microsoft Dynamics than we are being invoiced for. So if I looked at the invoice itself, it looks like we're being invoiced for 20 red shirts. In receipt 1165, it looks like we received 20 red shirts and 15 yellow shirts. So in the bottom right, it shows a difference of $75. Well, I can remove the yellow shirts item because it does not apply to this invoice. And now I match everything up. Everything is reconciled. I click the reconcile button and now it releases that transaction to Microsoft Dynamics to be uh, uh, paid as uh, on, on your terms. Okay. Uh, Non-purchase related invoices, they come in and as I said in the overview, they take a little bit different path. If we open up one here, so I pull back, I open it up. We uh, pulled back some defaults from the vendor, including the default account code. So in my particular Dynamics system, uh, I pulled back the payment and the ter taxes and purchase accounts. Uh, depending on which version of Microsoft Dynamics you have, this grid will look a little bit different. Um, but you can see I populated all those account codes. If I can accept the defaults here, or if you didn't have defaults set up in your vendor, I would click simply click this Add Row. And then if I start typing a few characters, it communicates with the chart of accounts to show me all the, on the only the valid combinations of account codes that I can choose from. And I can either select from the list or just simply keep typing until I get to the one I want and then tab off and then I can code this to another thousand dollars. And now because I automatically coded it when it came in, I'm actually going to reduce the other purchase account by a thousand dollars to keep my debits and credits in balance. Okay, so once I do that, I can say coded approval required. It then can communicate with our system to evaluate uh, based on certain parameters and default up to five levels of approval. Uh, in my case, uh, my system looks at the vendor and company combination and sets the approvers accordingly. In my case, it set it to department 200 as approver one. Uh, for each, I can say it set an approver two. Every company is a little bit different. Some people will use people here. Uh, some use more of a divisional approach like I've got here, but you can pick uh, different approvers. I can say manager 100 for approver two and manager three. Each time I pick a subsequent approver, if I've already assigned them, the system is smart enough not to allow me to, to assign it to the same person twice. Uh, we can also build rules into this. Uh, so for example, if I had approval limits for department 600 here, if I pick department 600, uh, it, since this invoice is over their approval limit, it automatically assigns that to manager 600. Okay, but I'll switch that back, and it clears since uh, Department 200, they can approve something for more than 2675, so it erases Approver 2. Okay, with that, I can say send for approval. Away it goes. Now it's immediately sent and put in their approval queue. We can use email notification to let people know something needs their attention. Uh, generally, we don't send an email for every invoice that comes in. That gets to, that generates a lot of emails. 
Uh, people start to ignore them, and uh, it do isn't as effective. Instead, what we typically do is maybe once a day, once a week, we'll have the system go out and check everybody's approval queue. If there's invoices in an approval queue, they will send one email that says you have five invoices to approve with a little hyperlink right to your, your queue. You click that, it opens up your browser, and you go in and you approve your invoices. Okay. If I log out of this user, log in as my approver. Each step of the way, we can control who has the rights to see and do what. So if I go into Joe here in his approval queue and I open up this document, we've hidden some fields that aren't really pertinent for the approver, and we've made a lot of things read-only. He is not authorized to change any of this information, either on purpose or by accident. Um, including the coding, we allow him to see it, but we do not allow him to change it. Some organizations want their approvers to edit the coding. Otherwise, in my case, I could come up here and say, return to verification. It would prompt me for a reason. I would say I want this recoded for this instead of that, and it sends it back to be recoded and puts that note in this area over to the right where you can see we're actually putting uh, system-generated notes in there. So you have that note there. Uh, you'll see approved by Joe, approved by Sally. You can see the document was coded by AP user. Uh, I can come in here and manually add notes by clicking the Add put in a note and make it highlighted or bold or uh, however I want that message formatted, and it adds those notes in that audit trail area over there on the right. Otherwise, if I'm an approver, I can simply approve this invoice and it routes to a final review step where AP gets one last chance to look at it before we push it over to, to uh, Microsoft Dynamics, or I can, I can select this additional approver and escalate it to my boss. If they're not already assigned to the invoice, they would be they would show up in this list. I could simply select them and then say approve and it goes to them instead. Other common things, I could reject an invoice, prompts me for a reason as to why I reject it. It then goes to a rejected queue where somebody will take the appropriate action based on the reason that I entered there. Or another popular one is not mine. Uh, if it got routed to me by mistake, I could say not mine, enter a reason as to uh, uh, why I think this was sent to be my mistake, and then that goes to a queue where somebody would uh, would monitor that. But if everything looks good, I click approve. It routes it out of my queue. I've reached the end of my queue. I have no more documents that match my site search criteria. If I log out to follow that one through, in final review here, this is a, gives a AP the opportunity to review those notes and see where everything has been. They can escalate it uh, to the AP manager. They could request additional approvers or send it back to the approver with some notes. Or if everything looks appropriate, they click export to ERP, and away it goes. If uh, something was invalid about that transaction, I would have gotten a pop-up that says uh, we can't pass that off. You would then obviously fix that and then uh, route it, uh, export it to, the, to Microsoft Dynamics. Okay, so that's essentially a brief overview of the, to the documents, uh, both PO and non-PO workflows routing around. Um, if we jump back over to my PowerPoint slide here, Uh, so there's a lot of uh, expansions, uh, items that we can add on to a solution. Uh, some of the more popular ones, uh, AR, HR, legal, new vendor workflows, auditor searching, payment batch approvals, uh, expense report processing, all kinds of different uh, uh, solution expansions. Uh, so I, what I would uh, recommend you if, you, if you were to shoot us an email at info at metafile.com, uh, set up a one-on-one -on -one demo to talk about your specific needs, uh, maybe review some of those add-on other capabilities that you might have uh, uh, opportunities for, or visit our website, www.metaviewer.com, and uh, we have all kinds of information there that you can uh, check on. Thank you.